a few things. I've gone with more simple lighting this time. Just a plain orange and the back instead of the orange and the blue. And second thing, I've gone dual monitor, except they are not linked. So this is just like the new 27 inch iMac. And that is my 2011 iMac, which barely works. Like every time I open Premiere Pro, it just crashed. So it's time for an upgrade. This is gonna be a very talking heavy video, you know, almost like a podcast. A question that I get often and one that to this day I still think about a lot is what fingerboard should I get? What size, what shape, and even what company? Today I want to give you a relatively in-depth guide that I subscribe to personally that will hopefully help you make your decision. Whether you're a beginner who's looking to buy your first fingerboard, like first professional fingerboard, or whether you're someone who's you know, been in the scene for a while. Nowadays, when I'm looking to try a new deck from a company I've never tried before, it honestly comes down to these factors. Do I like what they're doing? Am I impressed with their work? Do I vibe with the company or the company owner? And finally, what do they do for the community and scene or what have they done thus far? More often than not, I come across a lot of companies that have a lot of hype, but I just personally have no interest in, especially nowadays with all these new Instagram companies. I've noticed a lot of the craftsmanship is not perfected or it's just not to the point where they should be selling those boards. That's not to say that later on I wouldn't purchase a deck, but obviously if you're spending money on a board, you wanna make sure that you're paying for something standard, if not higher quality. So these factors definitely don't have to apply to you. That's just something that I care a lot about. If you're thinking about what company you should buy from, you should honestly just look through their Instagram and you know, if it's a company with a lot of hype, make sure the people who have tried those boards, like talk to them and see if they actually like their boards. If you hear a company has a lot of hype, but then you look at the graphics or what they're offering and you're like, I don't really like it, don't feel pressured to buy from them. Let's say a company passes all of those questions that I was just talking about for me. The next most important thing for me is shape. By this, I mean concave kicks, dips and whatnot. A lot of people ask me what shape they should get and hopefully this part of the video helps you out a bit. When I first started fingerboarding, I absolutely loved high shaped boards. Medium high concave, high kicks, and defined dips. I think these boards are really good for beginners or if you're trying to learn a new trick. I think it helps you understand how to flick the board a lot easier and high shapes are really forgiving when it comes to that. So you're more likely to land your trick even if you miss your flick just slightly. I'm not saying you shouldn't try and clean up your technique, but if you're a beginner and you're just starting to learn ollies and kickflips and stuff like that, I think it's more important that your hand and fingers know what it feels like to land on a deck. A lot of high shaped boards don't just have medium to high concave and high kicks, you know, some of them have low concave and high kicks. And to be honest, I think those are better than the standard high shapes because you can feel the board under your fingers a lot better. If you're just starting out and want an affordable high shaped board, you can definitely go for a broken knuckle deck. They are China decks as far as I'm concerned. I haven't tried one in a long time, but I remember when I first started fingerboarding, I really enjoyed using them. They're so cheap, they're like seven bucks. Incredibly inexpensive, and if you decide to quit shortly after that, it's not like it's a huge loss. If you're looking for something that will last you a little longer, my sponsor, Go on the Road actually makes a really, really good high shape. It's called the Crazy Shape. There's also Sorry for Fingerboarding or Sorry Fingerboards, which I don't remember what their high shape is called, but they have a really, really defined and aggressive shape. For Beast Pants, it's the Rabbit, and for Unique, it's the Juvi Shape. On the complete other end of the spectrum, we have Mellow Boards, which, you know, Mellow Kicks, Mellow Concave, everything is pretty low. I don't love low boards, but they are really, really good for trying to get consistent. Whilst a lot of people feel like they can't land anything on low decks, others actually find it a lot easier to ride a low board. Actually, a lot of my friends who ride mellow boards can't go back to riding high shapes or even medium shapes. I also think low decks are perfect for if you're trying to clean up your style. People who ride low boards always look so steezy when they land their tricks. A lower deck allows the rider to pop lower and 
and have a little bit more control in my opinion. That is once you get used to the feeling. Like at the beginning, if you're not used to riding a low deck, you're gonna be like, what even is this? Aside from rider preference, I think they look really, really good on camera. High shaped boards just don't look pretty on camera in my opinion, especially if you're filming. Abstract fingerboarding and Yoshi. Um, I don't know how you say Yoshi's handle, but you know, I'll put both of their handles here. Both of them made a really good point of saying that low shaped decks actually look more realistic and look like skateboards. I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel like I know enough about low boards because I don't ride them very often. I have a very specific preference when it comes to mellow boards. Some companies that offer low shapes are Unique, which has the hatchling shape. Fizzy Fingers, who I actually just did a review on, you can go check it out on my channel. Um, she does medium, low, and low boards. Catfish Barbecue has a salt water, and finally, a more recent company is FL Dex. I've never actually tried an FL, but I've heard really, really good things. Now onto a medium shape. So I don't think medium shapes are as simple as medium concave, medium kicks, and medium dips. After a Surveying around, I've realized that the line between low and medium is actually kind of blurred. To me, a medium shape is probably something like, you know, low to medium concave, medium kicks, and medium to low-ish dips. I personally think medium is a great place to land when you've been fingerboarding for a while. It's obviously very much down to personal preference, but if you've been used to riding high shaped boards, I definitely think you should go for a medium. And actually you should go for a low deck as well, just to, you know, experiment but medium shapes are so easy to get used to. You'll get more consistent with your tricks and your filming will look so much better. An extra advantage is it enables you to try other companies a lot easier because most companies nowadays still only make like, especially if they're new, they only really make medium to medium high shapes. And if you're used to riding a mellow board, well, I mean, you probably wouldn't buy a medium to medium high board anyway, but if you're the kind of person who likes to experiment around, stick to medium. I'm going to very briefly touch on width, length, and like whether or not you should get a popsicle or a cruiser because surprisingly that is also a question or those are also questions that I get often. If you're first starting out, go for 32 or 32.5. Those are pretty much the standard size now. There has been a recent nostalgia for 29 millimeter or 31 millimeter, which are both sizes that I started out with. When I first started fingerboarding, there was only 29 and 30 millimeter boards, actually 27 millimeter as well. I don't recommend starting at 29 if you're, you know, starting now, but I definitely think you should give it a try once you've been fingerboarding for a bit because it feels like cheating. But yeah, 32 millimeter is a great place to start. You can't go wrong and there is room to move up or down. So most most boards now are I think 96 to 99 millimeter. Don't quote me on that, but I've seen a lot of companies make boards that are like around 97 to 98. A lot of companies that I ride happen to make 95 to 97 lengths. Boards actually used to be 100 to 102 millimeters, which I don't even understand how we rode those decks. Like my very first Blossom deck was 102 millimeters, I think, and trying to ride it now is impossible. For me, 95 to 97 is perfect. So Popsicle or Cruiser? I honestly think it doesn't matter too much if you've been fingerboarding for a bit or if you already own a Popsicle shape. If you've just started or if you're just about to start and you're getting your first ever professional fingerboard, you should definitely go with a standard popsicle shape because if you try to learn tricks on a cruiser, it'll feel so much harder to do those same tricks on a popsicle shape. Whereas if it's the other way around, it's a lot easier. But again, just like having a 29 millimeter deck, I think that you should own a cruiser. Like every fingerboarder should own a cruiser because they are so fun as well. You kind of need to discover whether you prefer a cruiser or popsicle. Like I know friends who have been fingerboarding for, you know, over 10 years and now they only really ride cruiser shapes. They don't ever go for popsicles. Eventually, after you've been fingerboarding a while and you've tried a bunch of different shapes, you'll start to find your ideal shape. You'll also start to notice like small differences between different company boards. So for example, the unique medium shape, which is the nesting shape and the beast pants medium shape, the feral shape are not the same at all. Or another example is this fizzy deck and this beast pants. This is a feral and this is just like the new fizzy mold, which is 
medium-ish. At first glance, I think they look like they kind of have a similar shape. The kicks are relatively the same and so is the concave, but what makes them completely different is the dips. The Beast Pants has slightly more defined dips, which makes it more of a medium high board for me. Whereas this Fizzy deck has very undefined dips, so it's more medium low. Another thing that makes them ride very differently is the Feral board has a pointier shape overall. The seemingly subtle differences actually become more obvious when you start riding them right next to each other. In the end, it's all about preference. The shapes, like I said, also depends very much on the company. Like the company shapes could be totally different, but could be named as medium molds. They just don't ride the same and they don't feel the same. Personally, I now know that my ideal shape is medium or medium low. That took six years for me to figure out. So if you don't figure it out in like the first month of you fingerboarding, that's totally fine. I understand that in your first like year or second year of fingerboarding, it's really difficult to purchase boards like a lot and try a bunch of different shapes because decks obviously come at a high expense. However, a really good way to find secondhand boards is on Instagram. The fingerboard sale hashtag is great. Make sure you're buying from someone legit though. Check if they have references and stuff like that. You know how it works. But yeah, that's it. If you haven't watched my last video, which was a Beast Pants unboxing and setup video, I really, really enjoyed making that. So go ahead and check it out if you can and if you haven't already. And if you have, watch it again because why not? Make sure you're following me on Instagram for more photos and, you know, extra content. Be sure to also be following The Fingerboard Brew, which is a podcast coming up that I'm hosting with my friend Evan, also known as AusFB. We're still trying to work out, you know, what platform to put it on. We know for sure that we want to do a video version on YouTube as well as an audio version hopefully Spotify. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section what videos you want to see and I'll see you next week.